Hey everybody, welcome to another weekly edition of our weekly roundup for the financial uh, markets The through the last trading day of February, February 27th, 2015. This is Preston Brent with our Trader User Group. I'm happy to be here. What I've got on the screen here is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. As you can see on the screen, I've got a uh, fairly tight channel that we've kind of We've ventured out a few times, but um, we seem to be holding this fairly consistency. Now, this channel started back in November of 2012, and as you can see, it is relatively tight, but we've moved up, and now coming into January of 2015, you can see here, this is the markation of January as we started um, uh, 2015 here on the right here. And you can see once we came into 2015, we had these huge down moves. And then in February this month, we've had this big move up like that. Um, so, you know, the 2015 was really not starting off very nicely for the markets. And then in February, it just really just went like gangbusters across all indices. I think the E-minis, the S&P 500 was up about 5.5% for just the uh, month of February alone. The reason why I wanted to step out and just show you this chart here is that um, as you see this thing, uh, we are getting into a situation here, <coughs> excuse me, where we are starting to get a little bit top heavy. Now, 2015 has brought us a number of different things. One, we've had a, a change in leadership in 2014 small and mid cap were just decimated compared to the other indices but in 2015 it's been just the opposite in fact I've had our members um, and suggesting to our members that we should be playing the small and mid cap and those have outperformed NASDAQ in fact I'll show you the chart here in a minute is up over 7.1 percent just for the month of February in fact NASDAQ is challenging all-time highs made back during the dot-com bubble in the 2000 period but as you can see here with the E-minis, um, we're starting to get a little bit tired on this move up. You can see here, we've got, I drew in this um, area here that represents a, a support zone, not just one price, but a support zone. At the top of the zone is around 2088, bottom of the zone around 2078 roughly. 2055 was the opening price for the E-mini futures in 2015. You can see here we hit all-time highs back on the uh, middle of this past week at 21.17.75. And then we've just given it up just a little bit. And we've kind of come off of this ledge right here, which is where we're sitting. Right around or slightly under 2100 at 2099. Um, I do believe uh, we may make another attempt at this 21.17, but I also believe... Um, when I say longer term, I just mean over the next couple of weeks, near term rather. We're probably going to find ourselves back in this zone again. And should it break, we're going to be back down at our opening price for 2015, which is the 2055 area. I think the odds favor that. Um, if we look at it, there's also a little bit of bearish diversions coming on here. We have two different divergent signals. This first one was a really good one from that high to this high here. We jumped all over that and had some really good uh, uh, play uh, in this area as we uh, moved down. And then like I said in February, we got a signal to go long. I was jumping in on these long positions here and we just took off. I mean you never know how far you're going to go. I was quite frankly expecting us to hit resistance right at this area here. But we didn't. We just went right through. The first area of resistance was right here. Because if you look at the chart, um, we, we could not get above that level before. Uh, and let me just blow it up a little bit here so that you can see what I'm, what I'm referring to. And again, we're on a daily chart here. So let's just make it a little bit larger for you guys. So for those of you with bad eyesight, you can see what I'm talking about here. As you look at 2015, you can see we hit this thing. And we stayed on it, in this case here, for almost a week uh, here for a few days hung up here a little bit. You can see if I extend it to the left, uh, it's an area that has, you know, kind of provided support or resistance depending on which way we've attacked it. And then right here, and then we finally blew through for good here. 
uh, we made a couple of runs at it and then boom once we clear this area we got some escape velocity and I said we would probably take out our previous highs at 2088 which we did uh, and then we just blew through and made new highs now we're having this slight little pullback here I do believe that um, <clears throat> as we go into March the 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 there is a bigger risk to the downside down into this zone first as I said around 2088 2078 to 2088 roughly I think there's a bigger risk to hang up there because you can see we kind of just spent some time there and it was resistance over here as well um, should this break we're gonna come down and we're gonna hit 2055 which was the opening price of 2015 the odds favor this kind of move would not be surprised um, if if we do get a final push up here suck more longs in and then as we start coming down you'll have these sell stops which will trigger which will give us a pretty quick down move you can see the 50 EMA here sitting almost right at the opening price for 2015 here uh, the MACD has started to roll just a little bit but it doesn't give me too much cause of concern I don't think we're gonna have you know a really draconian down move but I do believe the weakness tends to indicate this now if we look at the NASDAQ and let's go to the NASDAQ cash index here let's just let me let me uh, come over here and you can see on this NASDAQ chart again we hit all-time high or not all-time highs but we hit highs for 2015 um, back uh, just a few days ago uh, at 4989 now this is the uh, uh, NASDAQ composite 49.89, and and to show you where the all-time highs were um, back on Nasdaq is that green area 51.32, and if I just step it out, you'll see here um, right back here the all-time highs that were made back on March 6, 2000, uh, the all-time highs, and now you can see as we fight our way back up, we're approaching these all-time highs. That is going to be a huge psych. Um, uh, area for the markets to take um, and then it may you know it may just be like a moss to a flame we're drawn to that area and once we hit it then we're probably going to sell off a little bit and have a little bit of hard time trying to get too much higher than that should we get up in that area again on this weekly chart you can see here that we got a little bit of bearish divergence going on as we're moving higher in NASDAQ so remember this can go on for quite some time um, but I do believe the risk of a down move continues to increase as uh, we move up. In fact, I think with NASDAQ bringing us back down to this zone right here, which is around 48.10 down to 47.60, it's a little bit of a wide zone, but that's kind of where I see this, this market taking us. Um, if I were to like go back into the daily chart here, let's, so let's just kind of zoom it in a little bit and just show you the daily chart you can see that zone right here you can see just like the S&P 500 um, we've got not quite the bearish divergence that we have in the S&P 500 you can see the highs for the year of 2015 you can see the price we opened at 2015 I um, mean you can see the lows for 2015 um, and I mean this almost on cue here we went from just about the low to the high just in the month of February alone that's a February move right there okay um, and you can see money just flew in and we took out these prior key pivots we went blowing right through this zone here and we didn't look back till we got up to the top um, so there's just been a lot of strength in small cap mid cap and in technology we've seen some um, some pretty aggressive moves here I do believe that we're going to see uh, the tendency, uh, just like in the E-minis, we're going to see that the odds favor a little bit more of a pullback in this one. And if we look at the Russell, let's go take a look at the Russell futures here. Uh, when I bring up the Russell, you'll see, again, um, we opened the year at uh, 12.03. We had an all-time high with the rut this past Friday, actually, at 12.39.50. Uh, but in the Russell, we got a little bit more bearish divergence going on when I just kind of condensed the chart a little bit. 
you can see here let me just get the let me get these drawings off the uh, screen here you can see on the right we've got that bearish diversion setting up which says we're probably going to come back and find ourselves in this zone here but the minute we start to gain uh, strength and start moving back up being in small and mid cap uh, or micro cap even uh, is the place to be right now um, I think on a relative performance basis, Europe will do a little bit better than the U.S. Um, they both may go up, but I think Europe is probably going to outperform with all the stimulus that's just now getting ready to hit Europe. Um, and, you know, one recommendation I would make, and, and there are a lot of ETFs uh, that can track, um, you know, some of the key uh, countries over in Europe, probably the strongest country over there right now um, is um, uh, Germany all right so they're probably one of the strongest and if we look at Germany you can see um, EWG is is just you know it's it's done very well let me get this damn thing up here for you guys you can see here EWG we came in here and we took out this key area right here you can see um, well, let me just let me let's try it another way. Uh, we came in here and we took out that key zone right in that area there, uh, and that's is where we're sitting right now uh, with Germany. A little bit of bearish divergence, not much. Now, another one to play that's even stronger than EWG, and it is a German country um, uh, ETF, and, and it this one here is a German ETF. EWG in euros. Now remember, as the euro falls and this gets stronger, it limits. It puts a little bit of drag on the up move. But to play Germany uh, where they hedge out the euro, um, it would be DXGE. Now look at this one. This is another way to play Germany, guys. Um, but you hedge out the euro. This chart is entirely different. It's a relatively new ETF, right? Um, but you can see here in looking at this, we're at uh, all-time highs through Friday, and there's really no bearish divergence here. Um, and this thing just continues to just outperform. So DXGE uh, would be a really interesting way to play Germany, but in U.S. dollars, not in, 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 in euros. Okay, um, It would be a really interesting one to play. Um, now, um, and if we come back and we look at um, just... Uh, a couple of other things here uh, if we go back and let's take a look at we've had some real interesting plays in the volatility market uh, we've done very well in the volatility market in our group you can see here this chart is the VIX you can see this highlighted zone here is 2015 um, oh, let's just see here let's get it back on the screen for you guys um, all right so 2015 and you can see the volatility has pretty much been in this box until uh, over the past week we've come back down here but you can see the 50 EMA is at this level right here around 1648 the 200 EMA is sitting at around 1548 and if we look back through 2014 both the 50 and the 200 EMA you know, they they were down sub 12 for a good part of the time. So volatility has been elevated in 2015. In fact, if I draw the line that separates 2014 from 2015, you can see going forward just how volatility we kicked off this year and it's been up. Now we play this to the downside, but I do believe, uh, as you guys probably know by now, with volatility. Um, once we get down in this area here, the odds favor a spike up. Now that spike up would be the pullback that I would be looking for in the rest of the market. So again, I'm not going to be surprised when that happens. If we look at the bond market, and let's get the bond market up here, um, you can see this channel that the bond market has been in. Now we just rolled over to the next uh, futures contract expiration month and you can see the bonds all of a sudden the price is up here it was not because all of a sudden prices just increased 
but the next futures contract expiration month, they're way up here. Now, I do believe this is going to work its way back down over time, which is why I'm playing bonds short. Now, if we look at TLT, because TLT moves in the same direction as bonds, you're not going to get that spike. It'll probably be a truer reflection of the actual price of bonds. And as you can see on this TLT chart right here, uh, well, let me get it back on the screen here for you guys. You can see here, here's the channel we've been in, just like bonds. Um, and you can see right now, TLT had this huge run up outside this channel. Um, and in January, right here, this is January. So you can almost see since January of 2015, we've just been off to the races, just Really, uh, some of it is the potential contagion of Greece. Some of it is the Russian incursion with Ukraine. Some of it is uh, the Feds and the FOMC saying they're not going to raise the rate sooner rather than later. There's a number of different factors that figure this in. But we play the price action. But you can see I've been short as we've been pulling back. And now we've got a little bit of a contra-trend rally, which I had told my members I thought would probably run into resistance at the 200 EMA. We got a little bit above, but we're back down, and I expect this thing to come back down. This blue line is the opening price of TLT for 2015 of 126.29. I expect us to take this out and get down to the bottom of this channel down here. So we've been short bonds or short TLT, whichever way you want to, um, you know, whichever way you want to look at the trade. I guess is is, is the best way to do it. Uh, now, if we look at currencies, well. The dollar is just really through the roof. Let me get this uh, currency up here for you, the U.S. dollar, and then I'll get the uh, screen back up for you guys. Um, if we look at the U.S. dollar here, I mean, really, uh, it's just it's just through the roof. Um, there's oh come on. Uh, if we get the dollar up here, you can see we ran right into resistance at the 50% Fibonacci off the lows. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we go back in time, let's look at a weekly chart, uh, and we zoom out. You can see here, now looking at the dollar, uh, we can see we using this back in 2001, right around the dot-com bubble, right? Um, the dollar was at all-time highs. Then we came down and we had this test here, almost another test, but we kind of found support. And then we've just been moving up ever since. A little choppy, but moving up. We're now finding resistance at this level, which is where I said it would be our next resistance level. Um, we may have a little bit of a pullback, but I believe we're going to punch through it. And we're going to come up to this area right here and then challenge this key price level right here of 104.60. We get up in that area there, we're going to see the euro come down to almost um, um, parity with the U.S. dollar. And I, I believe that can happen. There is absolutely no bearish divergence on the U.S. dollar right now. Um, and we're right in that sweet spot of the U.S. dollar getting stronger, which continues to make the commodities a lot more weak, right? Because most commodities are traded in the U.S. dollar. The euro um, is just coming down big time. If we look at the euro, um, you can see right here with the euro, um, my forecasted target, again, this is a weekly chart, but I wanted to be able to show you guys weekly, and then we'll zoom in on the daily, is right in this area right here. Uh, and the time frame is right, you know, in, in early summer time frame of hitting right around 1.08. Should this breach, we're going to come down and hit this dollar parity very quick. All right, I, I just think that's going to happen, which is you can see right there at the dollar parity level. Um, um, we had some resistance back in that area there. In fact, I remember when the euro first came out over here, and then it just started shooting higher and never did look back. There is absolutely no bullish divergence on here, just like bearish divergence on the um, U.S. dollar. So the odds favor continued sideways to down move. If we move into a daily chart of the euro, you will see the same chart, uh, and you will just see just how egregious this is. No bullish divergence at all. If I zoom in on this thing, you can see right here, we've been we've been in this tight range right here. You know, it tries to get up a little bit, but 
that's kind of where we are in the odds favor a breakdown to test this area right here and you can see it's already started to roll so I see that as the more likely outcome and I'm shorting um, uh, uh, Euro futures uh, in, in the futures market and, and doing credit spreads with options north of the current price in the Euro options or a Euro futures market with options um, and then the British pound which I do love to the upside um, we've taken a small trade in the pound. You can see this channel to the downside. We broke the channel. We broke the 50 EMA. The only thing that concerns me is we've got what appears to be a 3-4-5 pattern. So if we break this um, uh, 50 EMA uh, right in that area there and then we come down and we take out that Fibonacci, we're going to head back down and we're probably going to test this area here which is around 1.46 and then we will start to work our way higher longer term so we'll have one of these kind of fishbowl kind of moves that takes a couple of years to really work itself out so that is where the charts are saying now we jumped long right here um, and we're riding it up but I am watching this with, with, with tighter stops than normal because the markets do suggest it's just a little bit of a head fake move with a rollover. Should the euro get a lot weaker? Should the European Union um, uh, GDP just not go anywhere and all that stimulus? The equity markets are going to move up, but the euro is going to get weaker and the pound could possibly get weaker um, just as being part of this, you know, because Europe is one of the big trading par partners of um, uh, UK. If we look at gold, well, gold's doing kind of what we said it would do. We're having a little bit of a contra move right here. You can see with gold, we got, we're forming this, a little bit of a contra move up. There's the 50 EMA. Wouldn't be surprised to see us hit it, come down and test this area here. So that's a little bit about what I'm looking at in gold right now. Um, and if we come over to the energy market, well, I've got a lot of activity in the energy market. I'm playing oil, um, but if we look at oil, you can see we're in this tight pattern here. Um, you can see this colored bar down here. I would project using Fibonacci extensions off the lows. I would expect us to come down in this area. In fact, I was calling for oil originally to hit 50. People thought I was crazy because I was calling that back when oil was 110 a barrel. Um, but now that we've we've kind of settled in here and then broke this level, I said, you know, I was anticipating a 40 level move and then it just kind of found its footing started moving up but I think it's going to be a slow bleed like that and then once we get this we may even go sub 40 uh, and then find our wings and start to move higher that is what the charts are saying I am playing a, a strangle right now a short strangle where I've got a credit uh, it's not a credit spread but I'm short calls on the northern side of price and I'm short puts on the southern side of price with oil right now uh, Arbob gasoline this chart looks entirely different gasoline look at gasoline you would think this is totally independent of oil um, remember this right here was the price of oil right in this area here it's rolling back over Arbob gasoline is doing just the opposite so they're they're kind of diverging here with this thing um, now I, I am long uh, gasoline futures but I am a little bit worried that again we're getting this 3-4 pattern which would suggest we're gonna you know this is a contract month change we will get a little bit of this and then we're gonna roll back over again and fall pretty hard I, if we do get that I'll trade gasoline to the downside until we find a bottom down in this area round out and then start to move higher that is the favored move in gasoline we are moving into the seasonal period when gasoline tends to move higher um, and but we've got just a tremendous amount of inventory floating around out there so we got and we got a stronger US dollar so we got some things working against us but we at least we've been playing this gasoline futures to the upside uh, natural gas I've been playing this to the downside we're moving out of season when that gas you can see we've been in this tight box here I've been um, selling uh, calls in the futures market against natural gas and I do see this thing coming back down and testing the lows right here in fact probably coming and taking those lows out um, that's what I see uh, in, in, in natural gas um, now <clears throat> 
So, uh, and, and by the way, I've also been playing XLE. Now, I've been playing XLE to the upside uh, in XLE. We're starting to get just a little bit of a pullback. I've modified my trade in XLE a little bit. But you can see that is the opening price of XLE for 2015. I'm hoping uh, the charts would seem to indicate we're going to get this and then we're going to move back higher again. Should we break this price and start a run, I'll take my profits in XLE and shut it down because that means we're probably going to come down and test this area down here. And then I'll wait. Um, but um, if, if oil follows true to form, that's what's going to happen here. We may come down attempt to rally and then it just rolls over all right so um, even though all of these aren't correlated completely there is some natural correlation between XLE um, oil and gasoline futures so we just have to watch this just to kind of play this thing out all right everybody um, I hope you enjoyed our quick update for the weekend uh, for those of you that are not participating I highly recommend you come in and check out our trade adjustment position management webinar series we've had two sessions already but there you can view them anytime come on in we're probably gonna have five six or seven sessions carrying us through March and April um, and for those of you that are non members that are viewing our, our webinar whether you're viewing this on YouTube or on LinkedIn or at our website or on our blog come on in and join us we're having a great start to 2015 we're doing very well. We had a great finish to 2014, so I'd like to see you come on in and join us. Otherwise, have a really uh, fun weekend. We got March Madness college basketball here in the U.S. getting ready to kick off soccer and other places worldwide. So have a good weekend, everybody, and I will be in touch. Bye now.